Good evening and a welcome to Golden Lion Basketball in the 2018 SWAC Men's Basketball Tournament live from the campus of the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff inside of H.O. Clemens Arena. I'm Tim Stubbs along with Tyrese Boone here this evening. We are moments away from the opening tip. The number one seed UAPB Golden Lions ticket on the number eight seed Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils. These two teams hooked up just a few evenings ago and it was a Golden Lions route. 37 point defeat. Now they face off. Clean slate. Time for some postseason basketball, Tyrese. Yeah, look, now the thing about playing the same team a second time is the fact that, you know, especially after a ride like we did on last Saturday, they're coming back with a new fire. They know exactly what they're going to do. They know the game plan now. They know exactly what we can do. And it could be a, it could be a case of us just hitting everything we were shooting at because we were hitting everything we were looking at last game. So we just have to be careful, stay focused. I don't think this is going to be a problem, but anything can happen in this wonderful game we call basketball. So it's a matter of, really, it's a matter of how quickly can our shooters get the, get the job done, get the ball into the net. Well, we are moments away from the opening tip-off here, and we have the M4 pet band Maybe about us, yeah. 20 feet from us. <laughs> They're directly behind us tonight, so while they are playing, it's going to be very hard to hear us. Right. We're going to do our best. At least we, we can't hear each other very well, <laughs> but once they stop here in the moment, Everything will be good. We'll be able to hear each other. Hey, I got to say, they're, they're rocking the rolling right now, though. I can tell you that much. Wow. <laughs> I mean. And the, they already started the game clock for some I, reason. Not sure why. They're literally right behind our heads here. So we are set for postseason basketball. SWAC basketball tournament. First round here. Number one seed, UAPB. I really like the sound of that, Tim Stubbs. Do you like the sound of the... SWAC Men's Basketball Player of the, the year, year and Montavious, the marvelous the, one. The marvelous one, Martavius McKnight, SWAC Player of the Year, and Trent Steen, the Defensive Player of the Year. They both get the starting nod as the opening tip's going to go to Mississippi Valley State. And we are underway here from the SWAC Tournament here in Pine Bluff. Step back jumper. It's going to be off the mark. Rebound Trey Harper, and the Golden Lions have their first possession as McKnight brings it up. McKnight, Robertson, you got Harper, uh, along with Jackson and Trent Steen, the starting five for George Ivory's Golden Lions. Steen straight up with it, off to the left, no good. That's normally money for Trent Steen. He's going to have to try to get himself warm. Valley looking for their first two down low. Scott fumbled it away, trying to throw it out, and then lost out there by Robertson. We mentioned Scott the other night had a big ball game, about 20 points in the defeat against uh, UAPB, but Dante Scott also first team all swack. Yeah, he's a really, really talented player, very deadly from the inside game. Uh, on the inside game, driving the ball to the net. We're gonna have to see what we can do to try to stifle that because that's their main, the Delta Devils' main tool of Here's offense. Scott trying to go baseline and Great work by Steen picking yeah. up the charge there. Well, he's Defensive Player of the Year, and you see exactly why right there. Trent Steen, second team all swag, but named the Defensive Player of the Year. You have Martavius McKnight, the Player of the Year. He was three-time swag player of the week. Average right at 19 points a contest. And top 10 in many categories across the board. So he is the straw that stirs the drink, if you will, for the Golden Lions as we're off to a little bit of a slow start here. No score, just underway, just a minute 15 into the game. Going to get it to the right block. Steam straight up, in and out, no good. Battle for the rebound, lost out of bounds, and... We call the tie-up, Well, he, he actually going to go he, Golden Lions side? It's almost like he it was simultaneously, and he didn't know who it was out on, and it's gonna stay with UAPB. Yeah, but it's gonna be on a jump ball possession arrow instead of, you know, the regular form. So that might come into play a little bit later. 
Inside to Harper, knocked away, good help there on the backside defense by Naherny. All the way to the basket. Foul called as Jordan Evans is gonna go to the line. It was a close one, Jackson was right there, just a little bit too forward, too, a little bit too much contact for our referee's liking. So Valley comes in, feels like they have nothing to lose. They're the number eight seed. Really, they have all, everything to prove in this contest, especially after, like we said, the 37-point round. Uh, you, can, you can feel like any athlete, after being blown out like that, they're going to feel embarrassed. They're going to have a little bit of fire underneath them. They're going to want to come back strong. And that's what, they, that's what they're doing right now defensively. So the Golden Lions still in search of their first points. They trail 2-0 here. Here's McKnight with the basketball left side. Robertson again to Harper. Harper fumbles it away. And stolen now by Valley as they are crashing the bigs on the inside. They're putting a lot of pressure on the outside, forcing bad passes. And still here, good hands by Harper, gets it right back. Right side of McKnight, shakes with the bounce. Now Steen's got it, faces the basket, strong drive, straight up and scores. That time he just calmed down, he got up in the air and just did what he does best, control, and a lot, nice little touch there to get the nice roll. We are tied at two here. 17.35 to play. Early first half just underway. Scott left side, now Evans. Drives right, the little floater, no good, but the tip by Scott misses it, and let's see, finally, Jackson, after three chances for Valley, and then a throw away. The Golden Lions look a little uptight here early on. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on them. You know, it's being points. number one seed, Valley. it's not all sunshines and rainbows in, in Pine Bluff right now. You got there's a lot of pressure on your it's back now. There's a lot of expectations on your shoulders and you have to rise to rise the occasion. Harper's gonna take a break. Voice still recovering a bit, as you can hear. Here's Evans, lobs it right at the foul line, turning, facing the basket. Jumper is good for EJ. So 4-2 Valley. Here's Hardy trying to dump it off in transition and turns it over. There's a lot of second guessing on the drives by the backcourt. They need to decide on what they're going to do and then do it. A peculiar start for the Golden Lions here in the first four minutes. They trail four to two. Here's Scott straight up with it. And a nice high rebound. for the rebound is Robertson. That was beautifully contested rebound there by Robertson. Jackson off the bounce, now works the left side here to McKnight. McKnight fires, hits. Three-point shot is good for the marvelous one. The marvelous one is 36% from deep on the season. Evans travels. Gonna give it back to the Golden Lions with UAPB leading five to four. When, when our three-point shooters are on, they get hot. We've seen it before, we've seen it last game. When they get hot, it's just, it's impossible to stop, especially when they get momentum on their side. McKnight near midcourt now works at left side of the floor as they try to get it to Steen on the elbow. Works on the Herney. Shot clock down to 12. Steen again, strong move, and foul's gonna be called on Valley here. That's a little ripping EJ, I believe it's going to be on him. It'll be his first. And we have a media timeout. Take a quick timeout here. Five to four, our score. UAPB leads it by one. 15 46 to play, first half.
Back inside of H.O. Clemens Arena here. Deafening M4 pep band behind us. So it's super loud when you're right just a few feet away from those horns, right? I mean, at least they're playing good music. <laughs> Going to inbound it here to Jackson. UAPB leads five to four. First round action of the men's SWAC tournament. Hardy for three and hits. Yeah, I watched him hit that. 15 times in the warm-up here, showing up an hour early. That's his spot right there. 8-4, back-to-back baskets by the Golden Lions, their largest lead of four early on here. Three-point shot, left wing, will not go this time for Henry Taylor. Robertson will push it ahead. Jackson thought about the three, now he'll take it. Rims out no good as he hesitated before he shot it. He's looking for a reaction, didn't get one, so he said, might as well, why not let it fly? Haven't seen Tolliver, the rifleman, the sniper, if you will. Mm -hmm. As you'll see, Tolliver and Jackson both have the green light. They Pull up 15, do. footer is good, left wing for Evans. 8-6, Golden Lions by That's a deuce. Jackson again kind of hesitates. Hardy. Now to Steen, he's good at facing the basket. Backs his way in this time, a little turnaround, 12 footer is good. A little bit of contact on, one that, on that one there, but Steen is very strong in the air, especially pulling up. Very comfortable from that 12 to 15 foot range. 10, six our score, UAPB by four. Baseline drive, nowhere to go, sealed him off, but gonna get a blocking foul on Trent Steen. A little bit off balance when he was going to close out on that one. Recovered with the feet, but at that point it was a little too late. 14-17 to play. Still early in the first half here. Golden Lions got off to a slow start, but lead it 10 to six. And you can you can count that. You can give the rub to the defense of the Golden Lions. The defense has not slowed down all season long as the Seals are in the upper echelon of the conference, especially in defensive rebounds as well. Trent Steen comes to mind there. Second shot is good, makes it 10-7. UAPB will have the ball up by three here. Kwamari Hardy. Harper left side, Jackson. Spots up for three, it's short. Valley the quick rebound. Not the most advised shot in the world for Jackson, but I'll let him shoot it. Taylor needs some help. They got him trapped in the corner, and he turns it over. Robertson comes up with a steal as McKnight and Robertson had the perfect trap on him right there on the sideline. There's the sideline. Serves as an extra defender. Harper hits top of the key for the long two. I have Harper, you said Trent, uh, Trent Steen is good from the 12 to 16. Harper is good from about 20. Almost it's a three-point shooter. Naherney, no good. Offensive rebound, stick back is there for the Curtis Allen. Nice little step around there after the rebound, not panicking going straight up, but working his way around the defender. UAPB leads by three. Harper sneaks it inside, nicely done. The easy two as Charles Jackson sealed off his smaller guard there. And with him being a 6'4 guard, he can post up like that. Yes, I mean, Jackson has pulled some Kobe moves in recent games, posting down the smaller defender. Creighton, strong drive and gets the roll. It was Creighton who picked up a technical on Saturday night. Gets the basket there. Jackson short on the three, but the stick back 
Poor Robertson lays it in. How Robinson just hung in the air. He's got yeah, caught this collar a bit. <laughs> exactly. He's got some sneaky hops. Oh, definitely. 16 11. Here's Naherney. Travel, I believe. Nope. He's going to call a foul. Call a reach in. It looked like he took an extra step before the contact. But going to call it on Hardy, his first team foul, number three. It was, uh, I don't like, disagree with that foul. I mean, he did rip it out of his hands, so it's kind of hard to call it a reach in, but there's like, contact in the process. It's one of those judgment calls there. Naherty will inbound it here for Valley. Evans thought about the three. Nice pass underneath. Shot up, will not go, but drawing the foul is Lorenzo Hunt. He'll go to the line for two shots. Nice little sneaky pump fake there by Hunt. And he definitely, definitely got his man in the air. And he was flying over the top of him. Easy call for the referee that time. So Hunt will have two shots here. Interesting fact, Hunt had the majority of the uh, free throw shots on Saturday, in Saturday's game. He's really good at drawing fouls. And for the Delta Devils, number 21. He's really good at drawing fouls and getting to the line. Now, when he gets to the line, his execution may be a little bit wishy-washy. 6'4", sophomore forward out of Memphis, Tennessee. Played at Mitchell High School. That time, it was pretty good. Still have not seen Oliver's much out. Yeah, he's in the game now. Let's we'll see if, if he can free up some shots. There's McKnight a little strong on the 15-footer. Valley will come away with it, trailing by three. Naherney flying in the lane, nowhere to go, just flips it out. And reset it. Good kick out, ball movement. Naherney short on the three. And corralled by Tolliver. Here's Hardy. Behind the back pass. Robertson, pull up from 15, no good. A little too strong. Might want to use the backboard next time on that play. So Valley a chance to pull within one or tie with a three. Evans fires the three and hits. So we're tied up at 16. What is, what is contesting a shot? It doesn't even matter with these teams sometimes. You know, these athletes are so incredible nowadays. They can hit the three from literally anywhere. Tolliver looking for Tillman. Now they'll work it back left side. Works on Evans. Hardy. McKnight passed it up. Now he will take it. Too strong on the jumper. Probably should have should have shot it the first time. And an offensive foul. Legal screen going to be called on Valley. And that one's going to be on the Curtis Allen. And we got an immediate timeout here. We'll step aside. 2018 men's SWAC first round here in the tournament. And Pine Bluff, UAPB 16, Mississippi Valley 16. Thirty-four to play here, first half. We're all tied at 16. 
First round action of the SWAC tournament. UAPB meet Mississippi Valley. Hardy Tolliver, Banyard in the game for the first time along with Jackson and Tillman. Knocked away for a moment, good pass. Now baseline, little flip to Tillman. Banyard got bumped, no call. Tolliver's pass hits the bottom of the rim as he tried to sneak it up on the baseline, a turnover. Well, that, that last possession looked a bit frantic for the Golden Lions. They were trying to get some of the space, but the defense is stifling. And again in the corner for a three this time. Kylan Phillips gives Valley a 19 to 16 lead. And already off the bat, a different looking Valley team than the one we saw here Saturday. Much different. There's a lot more pressure in the man-to-man -man defense. And a now. little bit of pressure is the number one seed playing on your home court. The Golden Lions a little uptight here in the first half. As Jackson is short again on the three. Hardy for three and hits. And he is not tight. As right now he's shooting it as well as anybody on the team. Really? Hardy, you, know, you haven't really seen that much of this from him this season, but last couple of games he's been locked in. Exactly. Evans blocked out of bounds. Good stuffed by, by Big Boy Tillman, 6'10's Richard Sr. Boy, that's a big man. That's a big man down low. Good luck trying to go inside against him. And he's a natural lefty too, so that worked to his advantage as he sure went did. left on him. Excellent no call there by the referee as well. Tillman did not move his feet. The offensive player just kind of bounced off and threw it. Evans for three. Not this time, and Banyard up high for the rebound. Banyard, that, those hops are not sneaky by him. No call on the push off. Hardy again, long two and hits. Actually, that's oh, a three. They're gonna say it's a three. That was shielded by the official there. And it was a three point basket. His third of the first half as Hardy stays hot. That's gotta be a season high for him already. Short on the left hander there by Akuwense, Hardy trying to pass it here, deflected. Now Banyard able to get it back. Hardy again, Ooh. off this time. That That's, one looked he, as he, good as anything I've seen. Well, he, he hesitated. Just a bit. You saw the defender right in front of him. He hesitated on the shot and then kind of rushed it a little bit. UAPB leads by three. And nine of the 22 by Hardy. And another offensive foul on Valley here. Gonna get Evans with the push off. Oh, trying, oh, oh, trying to hook oh, around yeah. on the baseline. Oh, it was even gonna be an offensive first foul first or an out of bounds play. Fast moving first half. We have another media timeout. We'll step aside. 7.57 to play. First round action. Swack tournament. UAPB 22, Valley 19. Right back in a moment. Seven fifty-nine to go first half. UAPB leads it 22-19 over Valley here in the first round action of the men's SWAC tournament from UAPB. The 
top four teams host the first round, if you're wondering. Three by Tolliver, no good. Offensive rebound. McKnight to Jackson, and this That's time he hits. That time that one dropped for Jackson there. Beautiful work by him. He's been looking for that same three-point wing spot this whole time, and he finally found it. 25-19, now the largest lead here of six for the Golden Lions. And again, the second mid-range jumper. By EJ, that's, uh, he's got a good looking little face-up 15-footer. Yeah, he does. Ivory saying, go ahead and shoot the three. Jackson off to the right on this one. Kind of looked at the official, thought he was hit on the elbow. Yeah, I saw it. But sometimes you got to see in here if you're an official. Things move so fast, especially with athletes like this. The Herney, the lob to Ishe. Good hands there by Tillman. And a steal now by McKnight, who catches the save. Went down to a knee. Here's Banyard, the step by, and the layup. <laughs> I almost thought he was going to go ahead and throw it down. He was that high in the air off of a Euro step, a slow one at that. Nice athletic play and transition by Banyard. And it's 27-21. Ishe, step back, and they're going to call a foul. And on Jackson, who was behind him. I don't know where you saw the contact at. However, uh, Jackson's, you know, joking with him about it right now, so he's not too tore up about it, but. Again, I don't see where you saw the contact there. It seemed like good defense by Jackson, and uh, I believe that was Tillman in front of him. Excuse me, Banyard. Shot is good by EJ. He's got a little ringing in his ear there. Maybe a little bit of an itch. Kind of like us over here, ringing in our ear. Yes, definitely. As these guys don't know how to hold up, I feel almost bad for the people sitting directly next to him. But, you know. He's got a nice shot. He's got a really nice shot. Very down the both free throws. Cuts it to a four-point game. 27-23, just over six to play here, first half. McKnight, he's got it out high, now works the right side of Jackson, Banyard's wanting it. Steen trying to get it to him, and he does. Stripped, however, by Creighton in a steal. Well, you gotta be careful with the zones. And Hunt lost him and right to EJ who gets the bucket and that's one of those EJ. right place, right time. 5-0 plays, 50-50. I could have gone either way. Valley hanging tough, trailing by two. So a quiet first half for the Golden Lions offensively, but they can erupt. We see them going spurts. Here's McKnight. Shot is good as he hits the floor. He wanted a, he wanted a call as well. Yeah, he wanted one. an and one there, but uh, that's the kind of thing that McKnight can do, create his own shot. I mean, shots create or 2K language being spoken there. Evans, good pass to Creighton. Got his man in the air. Can't get it to go, but draws the foul. Yeah, Creighton, one of the more emotional players of uh, Mississippi Valley State. Uh, so emotionally got himself a technical last turn around last Saturday. So he's probably told him to keep that in check because he is a really good player, especially down low. A lot of size on him, 260 on that six foot plus frame, six foot six frame. As Creighton hits the first. Almost like a stack house line. Free throw for him. Really squatting down and getting the legs behind that. One shot remaining. Hardy looking to check in. Well, they could use his offense. He's leading the Golden Lions with nine points here in the first half for those three threes. And Fowler and continues good. to knock down their foul shots. One reason they're the hanging so with yeah. the number one Golden Lions right now. It's a two-point game, 29-27. Hardy checks in. Banyard's going to take a seat. Hardy, McKnight, Steen, Tolliver, and Harper, the five on the floor for the Golden Lions. 
McKnight from 15 on the left side and hits. I'm not sure what the game plan is, but I'm sure the first thing Coach said is do not let McKnight just stand open. He was open that entire possession. The swag player of the year has seven here in the first half. Evans to Creighton. Absorbed the contact, adjusted his shot, missed it. EJ too strong on the putback. Still alive, and it's Creighton again, rejected by Steve. And that's why he's Defensive Player of the Year. Here's Tolliver for three, and hits. Excuse me, everybody get down. There's a sniper in the building, and his name is Rocho Randall Tolliver. The rifleman from deep. Sizes it up, knocks it down, and the Golden Lions lead by seven, just like that. 34-27, timeouts on here Detroit by Valley. Man, how good is, is the rifleman Joe Randall? That guy, that guy can hit it from anywhere. Man. He, lo he loves the left wing, as we've seen him. I feel, like he, I feel like he sets up right at the edge of the main of the of the gold line standing there, sitting there with our field there. He likes to keep right the, at the edge of that. The SWAC logo over there. Beautifully. Oh, so yeah. nice. I mean, he was definitely in rhythm in that shot as well. That's, that's thousands of shots in practice and over the seasons that led to that. And these guys have been working so hard to get themselves into this position, and boy, has it paid off to himself. Man, oh, man. 4.08 to play before halftime, and in 34-27 our score. I mean, as the Golden Lions starting to look a little more in rhythm, got off to a really slow, sluggish start, and nerves could play into that. A little bit of tightness as the number one seed. That as well as... Uh, playing a tournament game for the first time here at well. home. And uh, I mean, I don't know if you noticed it, but there's like a different attitude among the Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley State. They are actually really stifling, and they're choosing to play man-to-man -man more often than zone now. And that new look may have caught, him up, caught us off guard just a bit, but we adjusted to it. Now, I'm surprised to not see as many screen plays as we like to run uh, the pick and pops. As long as they haven't run that well, uh, as often as we usually do, but it's worked out for us so far. Our three-point shooters is keeping us, keeping us ahead in this game. Valley will inbound it here, trailing UAPB by seven. They trap Naherty. Tie up, it is. It's gonna stay with Valley, but. That was beautifully done there. You can see that was designed. That was a synchronized pressure. It's a sneaky trap. They kind of lay off, a little false sense of security, and one let, false hesitation, you. and then boom. It's, it's, they let you get across the fast court line, so now you're stuck. You can't go anywhere else. A lot of, a lot of teams like to trap early and they can just hang back a little bit and find some space. Well, it gives you an extra defender. Exactly. Here's Naherney, baseline block going to be called on Steen. Let's be and careful. his second. That's his second. He might sit for the rest of the half. Just to uh, just give a keeper to that option, that defensive pressure is very important, especially in terms of his play. Nate Naherney, a junior point guard out of Houston, Texas, wants to make his way back home with a win against UAPB as the tournament will shift to the great city of Houston, Texas later this week for semifinal action. If the Golden Lions were to win this game, they will play 2.30 on Friday afternoon against the winner of Southern and Jackson State, which are about to play here this evening. We'll give you some scores and updates here in just a bit. As Naherney knocks down the free throws. A little extra pass, it was late by Hardy and Evans. Evans missed the layup and then Ishe tried to dunk it, but by doing so, came over the back for the foul. Yeah, you can't go over the back, even if you are putting the ball back in the basket, that's gonna be called every single time. Ishe was a little bit uh, protesting the call. Uh, however, the referee made the right call there. So 3.33 to play before halftime. Here comes the pressure from Mississippi Valley. Now there'll be some token pressure, but Evans right there with McKnight. Knight, the primary ball handler. 
Spins, beautiful move. Can't get it to go, however. Everything but the finish. A little bit of Riley Freeman there, had the dribble, had the move, just did not have the shot on that particular occasion. You can see he's a little bit frustrated there. Ishe, Hunt, too strong on the baseline. Here's Tolliver, pushes it ahead. Right to his favorite spot, Harper, right side. A little glancing screen goes up, strong with the right hand, partially. May had a little contact there as he came up short. It was a nice little slip screen play there on the break. I'm not sure wow. what that was, but uh, number 23 kind of uh, dropped into the ground. Contact <laughs> there, but he's doing some suicide drills over here. <laughs> Up down. My goodness. Evans leans and misses. Tolliver leads on the break this time. Needs some help. Gets it back, spots up, and he's hits. In the building. It's the rifleman. Uh, he's cocked and loaded. He's ready to go, man. You can't well, leave we, him open. We've caught him the rifleman, the sniper. Let's add the wingman to it as well. It's, he loves the wings. Yeah. That wing three right there, too strong by Ije. Rebound Steen. UAPB's lead up to eight now, their largest lead of the game. And the three-point shot is what they're living and dying by. And it was either going to be a no call or a block. They called the block on Evans. And that's going to be his first team foul number six. Evans is uh, trying his best to do anything he can to get some calls his way, but it's just not working out for him so far. I admire the effort, though. He's been trying to shift his feet in position. He's trying for the charge there. It didn't quite work out. I want to see some more slip screens coming in from the, the Golden Lions. That is really a nice play. Sprinkles checked in for the first time. Also from the point of Golden Lions, number 12, Jabron Sprinkle, sophomore guard out of Whitehall. Vanyard back in as well as McKnight and Steen take a seat. The SWAC Player of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year for the Golden Lions both check out. And don't think that just because those two checked out that we're any weaker. We have one of the strongest benches in the SWAC. And that's why we're number one seed. A buck 50 left before halftime, 15 on the shot clock. Right side is Tolliver, the wingman. This time no good, but he got a good look. He did have a good look on that one, just a little bit to the left on that particular shot. Evans, the blow by. Contested jumper, high off the glass, no good. Good defense by the Golden Lions. As Sprinkle has it out high, picked up by Naherny. UAPB up by eight, looking for their first double-digit lead of the half here. Harper spins, goes up strong with it, and scores. And Banyard was coming to clean up whatever happened afterwards. You could see the number 12 flashing before my face. The lead at 10 and double digits for the first time here as they thought about trapping there, but that leaves Ije open for the easy two. That wasn't a very synchronized Frankel yeah. kind of looked lost in that one. They waited too late there. 39, 31, 40 seconds left here before halftime. Harper faces the basket, strong drive, missed it as oh. There was some contact on the way to the basket, but they're really letting them play. Tough pass. High off the glass and scoring Jamal is Jamal Davis cutting it to six. That was a heck of a play there by Jamal Davis. I mean, he hung in the air and was still was able to control the ball off the backboard. 10 seconds left. The Golden Lions, final shot here of the half. It's going to be Hardy from 15. No good. Rebound as time expired. I believe that's going to be the end of the first half, and it will be. As we are at halftime, 39-33 our score. UAPB leads the number eight seeded Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley by a score of 39-33 at halftime. First round action of the men's SWAC basketball tournament. You feel it from the moment you enter our campus. It's a legacy of greatness. 
We are the Golden Lion family, committed to innovation and truth. We all come from different places, but now call the Pride Lands home. Whether it's the sciences, arts, or business, we're shaping the minds that one day will reshape the world. The University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Become a part of the pride. Back inside of H.O. Clemens Arena here, just about set for the second half. First round action of the SWAC men's basketball tournament. Here at number one, UAPB, leading number eight, Mississippi Valley State by a score of 39-33. Tim Stubbs, Tyrese Boone, and the Gold Lions up six. Did enough to take the lead in the first half and to have it at halftime, but it's looking, close, looking for honestly, more yeah. here in the second half. As they get it inside off the miss, Robertson's going to be fouled, and EJ is going to pick up the foul. It's going to be his second. And this is the one thing they haven't done very much of in the first half, uh, get to the free throw line. I'm searching through my notes here. I don't see an instance of where they took so many free throw shots. They haven't taken any free throw shots in the first half, so good start, but he got to knock him down. Rims out on the first by Robertson. Just 14 seconds into the second half here of the Golden Lions looking to advance to the semifinals with a win here tonight. They would face the winner of Southern Jackson State winner on Friday afternoon in Houston. Knocked away, stolen. McKnight to Harper, throws it down. Someone say, get in my poster. That's a Kodak moment right there. It was good hands by the SWAC Defensive Player of the Year. Trent Steen led to the run out. McKnight on the break, and then Harper with the big finish. Gonna have a foul on the floor. EJ going for the putback, and. I thought there was a travel before that. Steen kind of held him back down to the ground with his hand on the ball. Foul is going to be called on Jackson. It's going to be his third foul. He's going to take a step out of the game. Foul is number one, Charles Jackson. His third personal first team foul. And they're going to want to save Jackson for the last. Inbounded here to Scott. He's been quiet, held scoreless. First team all swack guard is Scott. Here's Evans in the corner now. Needs help, Scott trying to get it to Ishe and out of bounds off of Valley. And that's half the reason why. That's, that's, that's pretty much three quarters of the reason why even that we're number one seed and the defense has just been stifling. And it's almost a mirror opposite of what happened in the beginning of the game where Mississippi Valley's defense was the one dictating the pace. Here's McKnight. Left side, Robertson knocked out of bounds by Scott. Got a hand on it there. Other scores around the SWAC tournament. Texas Southern beating Alabama State 24-21. 7.41 to play first half in that one. And UAPB, if they were to win this one, will play the winner of Southern Jackson State. Right now, Southern leading Jackson State 15-11 with nine minutes to go in the first half. Alcorn and Prairie View have yet to tip off. And Steen was the one who was fouled on the way up to the basket. Strong move there. It's a second, second attempt at the line. This is what put them over the top in the last time we played. Steen hits the first. Being able to knock down three for shots. Five points to the game for Steen. One more coming up here. UAPB's lead at 10 currently. And knocks it in. So their largest lead of the game here of 11, 44-33. Doing a great job. Look to trap around midcourt. Scott, kick out. Phillips now to Evans for three and hits. Evans. Oh, catch and shoot ability. Jordan Evans. Very deadly. Cuts it back to eight. 
McKnight, left side, Tolliver, open three, Harper, no good. Harper's no slouch from deep, they have to be really careful not to leave him open. In the corner, Scott another miss, he's been off tonight. But an offensive rebound is gonna reset it here for Valley, trailing by eight. Valley taking a chance to slow things down just a bit and set up their offense. Scott underneath the basket and somehow got it to go. Five quick points here for Valley. Lead cut from 11 to six. Mike is so smooth. Steen wanted it, now they'll throw it. Other side of the floor. Robertson loses the handle, gets it back. Misses the 15-footer. You wonder if he can control that handle or will he not be able to knock that down? Getting back and foul's gonna be called on the Golden Lions as Hunt missed the shot, but he's gonna shoot two. Foul's on the Golden Lions, number 25, Christian Robertson. Hunt has a very strong ability to get to the line. Well, they say it's tough to beat a, a team three times and in a season. And that's what the Golden Lions are attempting to do against Pines. Valley. And the second time these two teams have met in the last five days. And that's what makes it very difficult, you know. It's the one thing watching a team on film and trying to game plan around that, but it's a no another thing when you've played against them twice. And we know exactly who to watch out for. And actually, say the second time in the last three days, as it was just last Saturday One night. And that was probably one of the harder ones for Mississippi Valley State. Uh, they did get a lot of information out of it, especially since this is where all the marbles really matter. Knocks in the free throw, we got a five point game. 6-0 run here by Valley. Hardy has checked into the ball game. He had nine first half points, all from three point range. Harper, good pass. As Steen crushes it home. <laughs> ball movement set that play up right there. I mean, they tried to double everyone, and it's really hard to do that without leaving a man open somewhere. And that man happened to be Har Mr. Trent Steen. Yeah, Harper passed up a good. Good shot for a great shot. Led to the big two-handed dunk by Steen back on the other end. Valley scores and cuts it to five. Here's McKnight as the pace picks up. Tolliver, good ball movement again. Harper spins, a lot of contact, draws the foul. The ball movement is absolutely blinding coming from the Golden Lions right now. It's, it is so incredible to see they're on a different wavelength right now. They're they're all telepathic out here, you know what I'm saying? Harper, Harper. Trying to increase the lead to seven. My mind math is actually working today. <laughs> Very good. Harper hits the first. See all those extra sessions with Tim Stubbs back in the studio going over scores and going over subtraction, head subtraction. The, the index cards really helped me out, Tim. <laughs> I love it. Short on the second free throw. So the Golden Lions lead at 6, 47, 41. Just over 16 to play, early second half. First round action of the SWAC tournament. Scott, ball fake, now to Evans. Low running, one-hander fading away, no good. Rebound, Jackson, here's a run out. Four on two break, the spin by Harper, and he's fouled. They had numbers, four on two break there, and if Harper didn't get it, you knew the trailer would, and the foul was called, and probably a good foul there by Valley. We'll step aside, media timeout, 15.55 to play. Early second half, 47-41, UAPB leads by six.
15-55 remaining. Early second half, UAPB leads 47-41 over Mississippi Valley State, the number eight seed. Golden Lions, the number one seed, as Grambling State won the regular season by one game over UAPB, but they were ruled ineligible for the tournament. There's so the, the Golden Lions, Lions were then bumped up from number five. two to Great number ball. one, as they are the number one seed in this year's SWAC tournament. Harper misses the free throw. One side remaining. Harper trying to stay at 50% with this shot. Rammed out, yeah. no good. Those are two big free throws that could come back to bite us in the end if we're not careful. So Valley a chance to get a little closer here. Six point game, hanging tough. We have a foul outside of the three point line on Harper trying to keep up with the quicker Evans. Yeah, you gotta try to play defense with his feet while your hands there. Harper came down with the hand just a little bit and these referees are not playing. They're gonna play everything. They're gonna call everything. Throw it in the backcourt here to Evans. Valley once trailed by 11 with 17 minutes to go and in a couple of minutes have got it down to six and possibly a little closer. Here's Creighton. Charge. He got the head, got the shoulder on that Second one. Second time, Tyrese, that the defensive player of the year in the SWAC, Trent Steen from oh, UAPB has drawn a charge against Valley. Head coach for Mississippi Valley State. Andre Praise, well, taking him out the air. Taking, giving Creighton an earful there as that was a blatant charge. He kind of ducked the shoulder like a, almost a football player would. Jackson State Southern tied at 22, five minutes to go first half. Texas Southern leading Alabama State by seven, four minutes to play first half. Alcorn up over Prairie View by four with 14 minutes to go early first half in that one as Hardy with a rare miss tonight from three. They'll run it out to Naherney. Now he'll slow it down. Travel on Evans, second time. He's traveled right at the top of the key. He's had a, his fair share of mistakes today. And Evans has really, yeah, really tried to do a little bit too much on this play, and he's going to be replaced by Kylan, uh, Kylan Phillips. So the Gold Lions. Up by six, but can't be too comfortable right now. As Steen faces the basket, 15-footer and hits. That's his spot. It's too easy for Steen, man. You can't leave Steen with any sort of room around that 12 to 15 meters, uh, feet and foot mark. I don't know. I said meters. <laughs> Either way. Naherney deflected. Here's a run out. Hardy, three on two to Jackson. Nice pass in the slam by Trent Steen. From the emotion just pouring out of Trent Steen right now. As he, that's his second big time jam this game. Good ball movement there by the Golden Lions. Good hands by Harper. Knocks it away and stolen by McKnight. Cross court, stolen there. Harper tried to squeeze it in to McKnight and it's picked off. Here on the other end, rejected out of bounds by Harper. Steen is unconscious right now. Absolutely insane. He is playing well, that, off his locker right now. Yeah, I believe that was Harper on the, the, the block that time, but they, they're about they're the same both. size, and it could have been either one of them. But it was Harper that time. They both have five on their back, so it makes it even <laughs> more confusing. And you like the hustle after the turnover, gets back on defense and gets the block. And good hands here, McKnight with a steal. Numbers. Read it perfectly, kick out. Jackson missed the three, wide open, good look. Got to knock it down. The entire bench rose as he had at least a week and a half. He had a paid time off vacation to knock down the shot there, but not able to do so in that play. And now you're what, you have to question the play. All well, the way though. That's a shot you got to knock down. More times than not, he would hit that, but. He definitely would, he definitely would. He's not a bad that one, lead at 10. 
EJ, step back, 12 footer no good, rebound, and the kick out. Tolliver to Hardy. Goes all the way and can't get it to go. That right there is where it would have helped if he could have used his left hand as he still stayed with the right hand and layup on the left side of the rim and overshot it. Yeah, he was uh, trying to do a lot there. Still up by 10, but two missed to, opportunities in transition. Make these opportunities right now. You see Hardy's visibly frustrated with himself as he slaps the ground. Phillips hits from 15. Besides that last possession, though, defensively they've done pretty well. 51-43, eight-point game. Valley still hanging around. Here's Hardy out high near midcourt. Pretty good pressure by Evans. Needs some help now. Dumps it down low. It's McKnight who had position, but got caught up underneath the basket. Blocked by the underneath part of the rim there. It's going to lead to a run out for Valley and a foul on Hardy. And McKnight would love to have that one back. Yeah, he definitely would. He's not, he's no real slouch underneath the basket, but he's more of a mid-range, three-point type shooter. That's where, his, that's where most of his money comes from. Underneath the basket, he still needs a little bit of work, but he's a junior, he has plenty of time to do that. Jumper, baseline is good, and it's back to a six-point game. Lorenzo Hunt has five in the game. Nice drive by there McKnight. He gets it right back. McKnight with nine in the game now. Long, tough pass to Scott. Little ball fake, strong drive, and a foul is going to be caught on Steen. That'll be his third. Action's going to be on the Harper. He was attacking Steen there, and I guess Harper must have. He came in on the help. And he must have got a little uh, light contact there. It's ticky tacky, but either way, a lot of size on the floor for the Golden Lions right now, trying to stop the inside game. A lot of a lot of Mississippi Valley State points have been coming from that mid-range area, 17 feet and in. That was the third on Harper. T foul number five. Both teams with five team fouls. With the seven before they get into one-on-one -one territory. Is that correct? In and out on the second. So the Golden Lions up by eight with the ball here. Tolliver right oh, through the hands the of Harper. Try the no-looker. Leads to a run out and a big jam on the other end by Lorenzo Hunt. And now Uncle Bo is starting to leave us for a moment. 53-47. Here's Tolliver. Now to Steen, needs help. Cross court to Jackson. Spots up for three, no good. I don't like that shot from Jackson. Now you can get that any time in the possession. Get a better look than that. Here's Evans, and he hits the three, and just like that, it's a three-point game as Evans cuts the lead in half. And right now, this dangerous bunch of Delta Devils. Starting to crawl their way back, yeah. Filling it right now with 11.30 to play. And a timeout on the floor. We'll keep it here. UAPB leading by three, but the Golden Lions not able to shake these pesky Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley State. Uh, yeah, the Delta Devils have really done an excellent job of staying with the force and momentum is starting to sway in their favor. That's part of the reason why George Ivory called the timeout. Have, uh, one of the things I've noticed is defense is creating offense for them and the pace is pick, picked up so quickly that the Golden Lions players feel like they need to try to match that pace. They don't have to try to match the pace. They can slow it down and use their superior ball movement that they've been doing earlier in the half. So that's what probably Coach I was trying to tell him. Slow things down, use your ball movement. They can't guard all of you with two players at once, and every single person on the floor can't score. The 
Jimmy Valley still trying to turn this into a track race. Jimmy Valley still trying to turn this into a track race. Give Valley a lot of credit, hanging tough, knocking down some shots. Golden Lions had an 11 point lead early in the second half here, but it has trimmed down to just three. 53-50, Sprinkle in the ball game, along with Jackson, Hardy, Steen, and Tolliver for the Golden Lions. Here is Hardy, he attacks and he's fouled. That's exactly what we needed to do. That's exactly what we needed to do, slow the game down and get some shots from the free throw line. Golden Lions shooting 46% for the game, 21 of 46. Now we will have a media timeout. We'll step aside shortly here. 11.22 to play, second half, first round action of the men's SWAC basketball tournament, UAPB 53, Mississippi Valley 50, right back in a moment. It's going to be Hardy at the line as we resume play here. And Hardy. hits the first. He's been and big tonight. Good. Years tonight. One shot uh, all through the regular season, he shot 60% from the free throw line. I believe he has. I'm looking at that correctly. But he knocks down both here tonight. It is good. He's been really on fire from the floor. So two big free throws there. And the dunk wouldn't go there by, by number one, Dante it's Scott. It's going to be Scott who gets credited for the tip in. He's got six. 55-52. Back to a three-point game as Hardy took a shot. They're going to call a travel. George Ivory not happy about it. The reason he traveled, he was knocked off balance because he was fouled. I saw a foul there as well, and Hardy was really waiting on the call from the referee there. As you can see, Ivory and an official having a, little, a couple words there before we move into play. Here's Hunt, now right side, they'll set it up. Down by just three. Valley with the momentum here with 10.40 to play. Hunt has been their threat from deep. Here's Scott for the tie, no good. And Jackson's gonna be fouled on the rebound, and that will be the seventh team foul. So a one and one coming up here and this is for Charles Jackson. This is absolutely important. Uh, this is a very crucial moment because they're now in foul trouble. Every mistake is gonna have to be paid for at the line now. So they have to really focus down and they're really kind of preventing them from playing proper defense. Well, free throws will be huge down the stretch. The Gold Lions, except for they need to improve upon and it's, it's a good start there as Jackson hits the first. 61% from the, from the foul line. I mean, you'd like your 
be shooting around 70% as a team. Ideally, and that there's a good. shot good there. Yeah, 66% by That's Jackson. He hits both, which is 100%. Here's Hunt. Waits on a couple of Golden Lions with the ball fake, got him up in the air, waited on him to come down, and then he's fouled uh, before he can go back up. You so be, they have to be better at not selling out down low. They've done that more than a few times tonight, and it's got him into toes and foul trouble. Jackson blocks the inbound pass out of bounds. 10-21 to play. Starting to get a little late here, just a five-point lead for the number one seeded Golden Lions. Over the lowest seed in the tournament, Mississippi Valley State. Here's Evans. Now Phillips needs help. Strong drive up with the right hand and scoring. Ana Quincy. Ana Quasi cuts it to three. As Sprinkle needs help. Oh, he may have almost oh. been over and back there. Wow. Instead, don't panic, don't panic. Drives it and scores. Relax. Just kind of like, get off me ball. <laughs> My goodness. He was all over him, and it didn't matter. Sprinkle was so good at handling the ball. Big bucket, though, back to a five-point lead. Here's Scott. Leans in, missed it, gets it back, lays it in. That's just some... Some good, tough backyard basketball right there. Yes, it is. I mean, I just want to point out something. The defensive rotation coming in from the Golden Lions is something special. No man is being left open at any single point in time. All shots are going to be tough for Mississippi Valley State. Three-point game. Size advantage here. Jackson. Back down his man. Now Steen's got it. Goes up and scores. I mean, how many people are on his elbows on that play? Oh, there's no wasted motion. Just get it, elevate, knock it down. Back to a five-point lead. It's got to be a little discouraging for Valley as they keep coming, but the Golden Lions have been answering, and both teams just been kind of trading baskets the last couple of minutes. Foul's going to be on the Golden Lions. It's going to be a one-and-one. One. It's going to be on Jackson. That is his fourth. Yeah, Vanguard's going to check in. And that's going to send Dante Scott, 6'4", 220 junior, small forward out of Miami, Florida. He's a transfer out of Howard College. Scott, you know, he played a huge factor in the game on Saturday. He's won 20-plus points. And a lot of that came from the line. Good. So you right. One yeah, he knocks in another here, cuts it to a four-point game. So the United State is really good at getting themselves to the line. They've been doing it all game, and that's what's really been it keeping them as close as they've been. 61-58. And once again, Valley pulls to within three. Banyard is going to be fouled right as he received the pass on the block. And it's going to be a one and one coming up. And again, every foul, you're going to have to make yeah. It's going to be a long night. You've got to knock down your free throws. I can barely hear in my headset with those microphones uh, turned up underneath each basket. Gives that good sound, but it really sucks in all of the audio. And a miss on a one and one. That could be very key down the stretch. Here's a three for the tie, and there it is. Tied up at 61, and it's Evans. He's got 16 points in his fourth three of the game. Hmm. So that 11-point lead is evaporated. And now a steal, tie up. Alternating possession, oh, Valley, and made uh, about six seconds away from immediate timeout. So it's never boring here at H.O. Clemens Arena, I'll tell you that much. Well, that's the thing about the tournament is, even though the Golden Lions just beat Valley three days ago by 37, they play three days later, 
Eight minutes to go in the ball game. You're tied at 61 with the same team. It's March Madness, folks. Yeah. Brings out the best in teams. For sure. 14 on the shot clock. Valley looking for their first lead since early in the first half. No good. Offensive rebound, Ishe, no good. Tips once, twice, and gets it to go on the third chance. And Emmanuel Ishe has given Valley their first lead in a long, long time. 63-61, Valley by two. Harper mm. getting ready to check into the game. Add some size on the inside there. Here's Steen. Rimmed out no good, and you can just kind of feel the pressure tightening ever so down. slightly, and the Golden Lions are gonna have to dig deep here tonight to get out of the first round and out of their own backyard if they wanna go to Houston on Friday. They just need to breathe and relax. Here's Evans for three. If that Missed fell, it. I would've Air ball. UAPB pushes it the other way, it's McKnight. Behind the back, good pass off the glass and good by Hardy. Good board, what a play. How Side at 63. is the marvelous one? Well, That's you're going to need your smack player of the year to step up. That's exactly what he does. Eight assists a game. Inside, Scott can't get it to go. Tipped out to Evans, and you can just feel the energy in the building. We are tied at 63. Every shot just leading to gas. Scott, little ball fake, stripped ball on the floor. And is it, they're going to call it tie up, alternating possession to UAPB. Media timeout, we're going to step aside. Take a bit you of can a hear break. my yeah. voice going out. 6-11 to play. 63 all first round SWAC action. And we are in store for another nail biter. Back in a moment. Pressure. Six eleven left. <laughs> you can hear the pressure getting so heavy. <laughs> DJ Bruce can't even keep his, keep his CDs together as he sound like the they're scratching on the record. I don't know how long it's been since you listened to something off a CD, <laughs> but uh, well, the Valley faithful. They got a few fans here in the house as they are trying to cheer on their eighth seeded Delta Devils, and they're playing very loose. They have nothing to lose. The old Lions playing tight, everything to lose. And we're tied at 63, six to go, UAPB with a basketball. Steen knocked away now to Harper. Here's McKnight. McKnight turns, spins, tough shot, missed it, but draws the foul. <laughs> Getting a little chippy out there. And the Golden Lions, eight of 13 from the foul line. It's not a bad percentage, but some of those, you got to knock them down. The game, the entire complexion of the game could be a whole lot different if those free throws have made it. Tonight, the highest shooting free throw player is besides you know, the highest shooting free throw player on the team, shooting at 72% from the line. And he and shows it right there. Knocks in the second, McKnight, swag player of the year, has 11 in the game, about seven off his average. Puts UAPB back up by two, as pass was nearly 
Turned over there. Valley gets it back, 15 on the shot clock. Watch Evans, he's got four threes. Here is, could be another tie up. Instead, they're gonna call a foul on Steen, but it looked like he had tied up Scott, but you can see, boy, Scott is a tough customer. He is definitely, he is definitely. Does not shy away from contact. He just, he just go kinda, go right in. Yeah, he's a big, they got him as listed as a small forward, kind of a tweener there, combo, small forward slash guard. I'm thinking a, sh a shooting forward, if you will. And he's pretty decent off the line, too, so we're gonna see where that leads us after this set. Ahead by two, this is for the top. And his first miss from the line tonight. He's got 10 points, four rebounds, three steals, four of 11 from the field. Now two of three from the foul line for the first team all conference. And makes the second. Pulls his Delta Devils to within one. With 5.20 to go, Hardy will bring it up here. Good defensive pressure by Phillips. Now McKnight drives right through his legs, the spin, pull up from 15 and hits. How pretty is that? McKnight. Gives the Golden Lions a three-point lead. He's got 13 in the game. He's starting to heat up. About as smooth as a three musketeer right there. Just so silky on that one. Here's Phillips. Kick out Scott for the tie. Got it. Somehow, some way. Timeout going to be called by Andre Payne, head coach for Valley, with 4.39 left. Dante Scott ties it with a deep three. His first three-point basket of the game. He was 0 of 2 from downtown before that one. Yeah, yeah. With a player like Scott, you got to expect him to knock it down at some point or another. And, you no, know, honestly, McKnight just should be glad that he didn't get called for contact with the hands on that one, as you see the Mississippi Valley faithful who made the, made the long trip, putting a lot of heart into their cheers right now. And the hearts are starting to pound. Pressure's starting to mount. Well, the Golden We've Lions been here so many times before. Went up by 11 with about 17 minutes to go in this game and looked like they were on the cusp of another big run and maybe pull away from Valley, but give Valley a lot of credit. They just kept making shots, getting a few stops here and there, and chipping away, and all of a sudden, actually regained the lead before UAPB went up by three. Now we are tied at 67, with four and a half remaining in the game. Here's Tolliver to Banyard. Swings it out to McKnight, the drive. Pull up, no good. Ugh. Long rebound in the corner, chased down by Phillips. Andrew was ready for that one, but great box out there by EJ. To keep him from going over the top and knocking that one down. Evans for the lead, no good. Rebound McKnight. Octavius McKnight brings it up slowly. He's got 13 in the game, and they're gonna need him big down the stretch. Under four remaining, tied at 67. There's Tolliver. Hardy, baseline drive. He's trying to squeeze it in there to Harper. Knocked out of bounds by Valley with three on the shot clock. Not a lot of time. And another media timeout. So the Golden Lions are gonna talk it over here with three on the shot clock and 339 remaining in the game as my voice is trying to hang on as the Golden Lions are trying to hang there. on. Tied at 67 back in a moment.
Well, DJ Bruce trying to get the crowd pumped up. It's a little subdued in here with three on the shot clock. Golden Lions tied with Valley, 67 all. First round action here, SWAC tournament. Tolliver has to force up a three. It does hit the rim. Offensive rebound and now kicked out. Hardy with the big rebound. And the shot clock should reset off the miss. And not sure if it did. And Coach Payne for Valley is yelling at something. I don't know what he's, he's screaming trying to, at. He was really trying to get a call, a shot clock violation. Oh, it hit the rim, though. It definitely hit the rim. I don't think he saw that, though. Yeah, yeah. Because he was been screaming ever since it the was, rebound was achieved. It definitely caught a piece of the rim. So, Gold Lions with the inbound here, 21 on the shot clock. A lot of contact on McKnight, left side, Tolliver. Artavius. He wants to go one on one. McKnight pull up from 17, no good. Oh, the ankles were about to be repossessed Man. by McKnight, but big time miss. Tied 67 3 to play. It's winning time. It's March Madness, and it's going down to the wire again. Oh, God, my heart hurts right now. <laughs> wow, the Golden Lions seemingly have played in about 10 games in conference play just like this. Lost control of it. Did Phillips taken away out of the air? This is the chance. Ahead to Hardy. No, there, no, it is good. Oh Hardy, my goodness! Somehow, some way, gets it to go and one, and a chance for a three-point play. How oh big was goodness. that? Uh, so big, I'm off my seat right now. That was that was insane. Hardy is doing everything. In his power as he got 15. Well, Phillips, Phillips was going to shoot it. He lost it. Harper was right there. He grabbed it, kicked it ahead to Hardy. Hardy gets the layup and draws the foul. And a big free throw here to give UAPB a three-point lead. And Hardy is always so aware of where the ball is in the situation. He's always there on the outlet pass, ready to push the ball forward. And it pays off in that one. 70 to 67. Three point lead, 225 to go. Here's Naherty. Out high with it. And now it's a little bit more electric in here. Needs some help. EJ goes up, can't get it to go. Up high for the rebound is Banyard. And, and the Marvels won so calm, not even aware of McKnight. the situation. Two minutes to go. Here's McKnight. Golden Lions up three in the ball. Off a little brush screen by Harper and a foul is going to be called. And free throws coming up. It's going to be two shots. And that's big to get out of the one and one. Exactly. Uh, Golden Lions still have two more fouls when they're in the same situation. So advantage Golden Lions here to, on the double bonus. McKnight gets the bounce on the first. And a four-point lead. Boy, you, you go back maybe after this game's over, think back of that three-point play by Hardy, how big that was. That, that was the postcard that brought back Uncle Mo back to the house. It's this is electrified on the that moment. second free throw does McKnight. So he's got 14 in the game, but misses a big free throw there. Here's Naherty. Valley with the ball, 145 left. They trail by four. They still trail by four after the miss. Trying to save it was Scott, and he throws it off the leg of his teammate. UAPB is going to get it back. Yeah, you know, I think he was aiming for a golden line on that one to try to Get the ball off of him, that classic play off the foot. Swing and a miss. Definitely so, and Evans looking to put some pressure on McKnight. And McKnight brings it up. Evans right there with him. And McKnight is so good at pressing folks down. Needs oh, some help. That time. Lost it. Hunt's going to come the other way and jam it on. McKnight kind of felt maybe he was fouled there. As they there was a lot of body on that one, though. Yeah, he slipped sure. and fell down after the contact. And a big steal with 109 to go, cuts it to two. Mm. 
It really is one of those one of those games that can be down to one defensive play on either side. Here's Hardy. Inside Harper, straight up, missed it to the floor. That looked like a travel. And it was. They do, okay. As he, he caught the rebound and then went to the floor with it, and then as it really? travel, so UAB is going to get it back. So we're in winning time right now. Yes. We are in winning time. Winning time. We're going to break. 71 to 69. We'll be right back. 50 seconds. Tim Stubbs and Tyrese Boogie Boo. It's, you're going to be exhausted over here, man. We got a two point game with 50 seconds remaining. And it was a travel yeah. called on Lorenzo Hunt as he got the rebound on the Harper miss, but he went to the floor with it. And the Golden Lions will get it back here. New shot clock, 50 seconds left. Hardy had fallen down. Now Harper wants to back his man down, needs some help. Luckily, he's able to kick it back out. Now McKnight will set it up with 18 on the shot clock. They'll take as much time as they need to. 33 now on the game clock. Harper to Banyard, cross court. Tolliver, baseline drive, gets it to Harper. And That's, so That's so big right there. The extra pass paid off. Four point lead. Evans forces up a tough banker. 17-foot spinning bank shot from the right wing. Not only spinning, My but goodness. spinning the opposite way of the way he was going. It looked almost like a video game shot, 2K18. I think, wow. you, I think you guys have a new mocap man right there. That was I crazy. was about to say Evans taking a ill-advised shot, and somehow it banks he pulls it off. and. He keeps Valley to within two, 73-71 with a very difficult bank shot from the right wing. Yeah. As the, woo! These fans out here are electrified and they may have been subdued at least a minute and 20 seconds ago, but there's no sign of that now here. Well, they took away our little barrier behind us. Which is Maybe too early. early yeah. They'll kick it ahead here, 15 seconds left. Tolliver, Hardy, and Harper is fouled hard. And, and that was a hard foul, and that's exactly what Scott needed to do to give them a chance in this game. Man one would have probably sealed it. 11 seconds left. 11.7 to go. It's going to be Harper at the foul line here. Should, should UAPB have pulled it out there to try to eat some more time up is the question. Now Harper will go to the line here for two shots with UAPB leading by two. You've got to make at least one of these. Yeah, see, if he makes both of them, it's a two possession game, and it puts us in a really good situation. If he makes one, it forces them to do it shoot a three to tie, and that's the situation we are right Big now. Big free throw, Trey Harper. He's got eight in the game, and none bigger than that one right there. And chance for two possessions. Yes! Got it. Four-point lead for UAPB with 11.7 to go. That was two clutch free throws for the senior Trey Harper. 
Here's Evans. Evans draws the foul on Harper, and that's going to be his fourth with seven seconds left. Two free throws coming up here with seven seconds. And Talk about Evans trying to cut it to a two-point game. They need a two-point game. They need a, both these free throws, or at least one, and, and a steal. Clock out. You have to get this rebound if they miss. There is a chance they might miss on purpose to try to get an extra possession out of this on the second shot. Good. There's just so little time on the clock right now. And gets the roll on the first. Makes the first. Gonna have a timeout here by timeout. Valley to talk it over. With seven think, seconds left. I think they're gonna be deciding on exactly what I was saying whether or not they want to try to get a second possession out of this because we're really good at closing out tight games like this and keeping possession. The ball movement we've had has just been so smooth, silky smooth, and the, the, the idea of trapping is just, it's very dangerous to try to trap this team just because of how good we are at passing the ball. So if you miss on purpose here, Get the rebound, kick out for a three. Maybe it's to Evans, who's been on fire from three-point range. Or do you knock this one down and try to play some tough, tough defensive situation for seven seconds? That took the barriers away from us and put it on the side. Of Jordan the Evans at the line here with seven seconds to go. Gets the roll. Big inbound here. And trying to get it in with 6.6 .6 seconds left. UAPB leads by two. Can't afford a turnover here. Clean inbounds would be big. They get it to Harper. Now Tolliver to McKnight. McKnight is a glancing foul. I don't know if they got much of him, but with 3.5 seconds left, McKnight will go to the line with UAPB leading by two for two shots. This is huge. I mean, that's a big call by the official. That looks. Oh, if he don't, if they don't go out there, the, the, the game's over. over. Yeah, exactly. That was a beautiful move by McKnight to, to get himself by him. And big I, shots I, here. I, if it wasn't for the gravity of the situation, that wouldn't be called a foul. You got to have at least one of these. Two would be nice. Easy as Got the first one. That's the big one. Makes it a three-point game, 76-73. And now one more here. If McKnight can hit it, it will should put the nail in the coffin. For the game, McKnight so composed, has the poker face of the World Series of Poker champion. Full tilt, huh? Full tilt indeed. And he got the down. roll. That might do it. 77-73, four-point lead. Here's McErnie at the buzzer. Air ball, game over. And the Golden Lions hold on, yes. survive, and advance. What a game. What a game. 77-73, the final number one seeded UAPB. Wins it over the number eight seeded Mississippi Valley State Delta Devils by just four points in a game that could have went either way down the stretch. Your final thoughts on this thriller? What a game. All right, that's, the only, that's the only three words that you can really say about this. I mean, Mississippi Valley had an, a very excellent game plan to switch up, the, switch up the defenses, go from man defense to zone defense, and it was working from time to time. The only difference was we had just the players that were able to make the tough plays in the end, and that's what separated us in the down the stretch. Great effort, though, by Mississippi Valley State. What a game it was. UAPB survives and advances to play in Houston in the semifinals of the Southwestern Athletic Conference Tournament Friday afternoon at 2.30. They will play the winner of Jackson State versus Southern. And Jackson State 
is leading Southern currently 45 to 35 with 12 and a half minutes to go. Second half in that one. So the Golden Lions, they were the number one seed. They felt the pressure, but they get through it as the M4 playing the alma mater directly behind us. So we'll have to wait and see who the Golden Lions are going to play. But the important thing, Tyrese, is they survived and they're moving on. The crew here tonight for UAPB TV, Randy Kelly, our director, our camera operators, mass communications, Janarian Rivers, Frederick Price, Gabe McDonald, and Kiana Austin, and color commentator, also mass communications, Mr. Tyrese Boogie Boone in the house. I'm Tim Stubbs saying so long for now. We will see you in Houston, Texas for the semifinals. The Golden Lions advance and will play Friday in Houston. So long, good night, and go Lions.